If I was judging by pure popularity, YouTube views, and name recognition, I would say that there is no girl group in the world right now who is bigger and more successful than Blackpink. Now, you could talk about other groups that have lots of, lots of popularity in certain regions. Of course, Little Mix is a hugely popular group, and, but they're an eight-year-old group at this point. And even going over to Korea, we still have groups like TWICE who are incredibly successful over there and in Japan, but not as much internationally. And they won more awards than Blackpink, but again, they have more of an output. Blackpink are easily the most name-recognizable girl group left, and that I see. I know Fifth Harmony was huge a few years ago, but they've disbanded, and like I said, Little Mix is an eight-year-old group. Here we are with Blackpink, probably being the most recognizable group at the time. Now, I don't think they're gonna last forever. Their moment will be up, and I think they're going to, um... They're going to disband when their contracts expire, because the likelihood of them renewing their contracts after some of the stuff that's gone on behind the scenes is not likely. Now, I'm not here to predict what I'm going to say, but, yeah, I think in 2023, when Blackpink, you know, possibly disbands, my money is on ITZY. I'm betting on ITZY, another Korean girl group from the same company as TWICE, who have already been incredibly successful internationally and online. So, yeah, I think, I think ITZY is in a huge position to overtake Blackpink, but for now, it's still Blackpink's moment, and we're going to give them that. Now... Blackpink are notorious for not releasing much music, which honestly makes their achievements and views all the more impressive, because people would- you would think people would forget about them, but no. They're still the most hype thing- still the most hype group around whenever they do release a new single. Everyone goes nuts about it. And honestly, I can see why. The girls have incredible power and charisma. They're super talented, especially in the rap department. The dances are catchy. The songs are usually very catchy and feature a blend of EDM, trap, and pop. And of course, the fan base is massive. Again, these girls have a ton of charisma and attitude. They're also absolutely gorgeous, which again, it, that kind of helps if you're trying to, trying to, um, have a successful group. It helps, looks do help. I'm not trying to say that it matters in the end. I don't care that much about looks, but, you know, everyone wants to be Blackpink or be with Blackpink, one or the other. Anyway, here we are, and with Blackpink, and they finally released an album. Now, They've released a couple of EPs in the past, several singles, and they've been around since 2016. This is a four-year-old group that only just released their first album. This is nuts. Now, I've seen a lot of younger K-pop groups that have debuted maybe last year who haven't released an album yet. They've just released EPs, which I can totally see. I'm really, I really can't believe that groups like Idol still haven't released a full-length album, but they've had considerable output since their debut, many singles, and pretty, and pretty solid EPs overall, and several of them. Blackpink had a few singles, two EPs, and then just this album. This this only boosts their song count into the 20s, finally. That's including collaborations and singles. They also don't have exclusive Japanese songs, which I think is odd. They have Japanese versions of their songs, but I find it interesting that they never released exclusive Japanese songs, whereas TWICE have songs that are exclusively Japanese, and they're all the more successful over there for it. But I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, what did we get with Blackpink, the album? Well, we got a very large box here. This is, um, enormous. Uh, we got a pretty extensive photo book, um, and the album, there's photo cards. The CD is, like, at the bottom of this thing. Now, um... I do have this physically. This is the version 2, this is the pink version, there was a black version, that was version 1, and then a couple of multicolored versions for version uh, 3 and 4. Now, I don't often have these things physically. Um, if I don't have it physically, I will just edit a photo of me holding the cover art of the album, but here I actually have it physically, so here you go. Um, this thing is a giant hunk of a thing. Um, and, um, honestly, I kind of like the packaging. Now, um, I like it because it's magnetic, it just flaps open, it's not like some of the other albums I've gotten where it's just like, you have to open it, and it's cardboard and it will fall apart. I'm getting sidetracked though. What I mean, what we get with this album is the album itself, not the, um, not the actual box that this thing comes in. Now, I'm listening to this on Spotify here, I'm not actually playing this CD that's buried in here, but, um, <laughs> here we go with Blackpink, the album. Now, we only have eight songs here, which feels kind of short for an album, especially an album that used a Western-style promotion. I feel like most Western-style albums tend to have at least ten songs on them, so, 
yeah, this is kind of short for an album. What I mean by Western style promotion is that they released two singles way in advance before the album came out and released another single with the album, which is more of a Western style album promotion. A lot of times in Korea, they'll just release an album or an EP with a single at the same time or whatever. They don't really release multiple singles and don't build up hype around an album as much. They just kind of drop it with the single. And here we are where Blackpink took the approach of whatever. Blackpink's company, YG Entertainment, they're a hugely successful company. You might know them for groups like Big Bang, 21, Icon, etc. And um, they have, um, you know, always wanted to push into the Western market more than some other groups. You do have groups like SM Entertainment, companies like that, trying to push groups like Super M into the into the Western market. I definitely see that happening and I don't know how successful it's really been. I mean, people do seem to know them, they are, but they are not the household name that a group like Blackpink or BTS is. Obviously, BTS became a household name kind of out of nowhere. Their company wasn't trying to push them into market or anything. They just got really successful and garnered a lot of fans because of their music and personalities. However, but BTS have, have had consistent output. They've put out multiple full-length albums. And here we are with Blackpink only just releasing their first album that only has eight songs on it. So quality over quantity? I would say typically, yes. I do like the majority of Blackpink's songs and I could see people not liking them. If you're not into this kind of hard-edged, brassy EDM sound, you're probably not going to like Blackpink stuff. If you don't like those types of hard drops or or, you know, trap instrumentals, weird mixes of genres. Again, you're probably not going to like them. However, I always thought their music was up my alley. Again, I can see people not liking Blackpink's music, but I do. And typically, I like their songs. So, how are we with the album? Which is literally called The Album. I, I can't just... In other words, they make this way too big of a deal. Um, again, this is, this is how thick the thing is. Um, so, yeah... I didn't just do an insert of a book, this is a whole ass box. Um, I, though I do think this, this photo book is really cool, because it has this on it. I'm sorry, I'm just geeking out over the fucking photo book. Anyway, let's, let's talk about the actual music. So, here we are with Blackpink, and they released their first single for this album back in June with How You Like That. And I want to be very clear, this song is about something. This song is about either overcoming struggles from their haters or overcoming a toxic relationship or something like that. It's basically a less harsh version of Kill This Love, which was their last single last year. Now, think about how you like that. And I mean less harsh in every sense of the word. The drop isn't nearly as abrasive with those fake horns. It's mainly just more brassy and springy. Springy, see what I mean? It's bouncy. Again, I can see a lot of people really disliking this. However, I came to like it after a few listens. At first, I thought it was too derivative of songs like Kill This Love, which I didn't like, but after listening to this more, I definitely think it's catchy. The song has hooks, and it's a pretty good song. The verses are way too short, though, and How You Like That is a song that, again, really screams I'm back, bitch, single. Now, Todd in the Shadows coined this term. Now, I'm gonna be very clear that his one of his, um qualifications was the song has to be about nothing, which I think is kind of unfair. I think I've seen plenty of I'm Back Bitch singles which have something to do with something. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. This was basically their big comeback single and pretty much everything you would expect out of a Blackpink song at this point. In fact, when I first heard it, I thought it was way too derivative and boring. I was disappointed. Now, I've had four months for this song to grow on me and it certainly has. Ice Cream, on the other hand, sucks. This was their second single they released in August with Selena Gomez. Now, no hate to Selena Gomez here, she sounds fine on the song, but god, this beat is obnoxious. My biggest problem with Ice Cream is the insanely clumsy English lyrics, which were written by Ariana Grande and Victoria Monet, and I just reviewed Ariana Grande's album, and I think her lyrical skills are kinda not that great, as much as I love Ariana. So, yeah, these, these English lyrics are really clumsy. Uh, now, again, I don't blame the girls or Selena for this. It's just clumsy. Now, the biggest problem with the song is a bunch of just really clumsy sexual innuendos that don't land, and the obnoxious beat put together with the music video, which has a lot of really childish imagery, which is kind of disturbing. And then we have Jenny going mouth-to-mouth -mouth with this 
animal. I don't know. Just watch the video if you're curious. All I can really say is that this song is catchy and it's different for Blackpink, but that doesn't make it good. It makes this my second least favorite Blackpink song after See You Later, and oh my goodness. I could talk all day about the fact that Blackpink's collaborations never seem to land. Like, seriously, I don't like any of them. I don't like any of them. And that extends to Bet You Wanna with Cardi B, which is fine and decently catchy, I suppose. It's a bit better than the other song. I still don't like the cheap-ass clicking beat to this. It feels so cheap, and I could also see this song getting into my head for all the wrong reasons. Um, having Cardi B on this is kind of jarring. She obviously has to censor herself because she's working with, you know, artists who are not as forward and sexual as Cardi B's typical discography. Now again, she sounds fine. All the performances on this are fine. The beat is cheap and the song is obnoxiously catchy. So, I'm not really a fan of this one either, but it's no ice cream, that's for sure. Yeah, so, this is the fourth song in the album. The third song in What Would Be Poised If They Decided To Release Another Single Would Be Pretty Savage, which is a song that actually does have a choreography and they performed it on stage, so I'll give it credit for that. And Pretty Savage is absolutely a bop. I think this song, this really screams a typical Blackpink song, and it doesn't need any collaborators or features. One thing I really do like about this album is that they let Jenny rap again. Jenny is probably one of the best rappers, and one of the best female rappers, however, she um, doesn't get to rap much because Jenny can also sing as well as rap, whereas Lisa, who is mainly the dancer and secondary rapper, but she gets more leading rap parts these days because they don't want Lisa to sing and the line distributions are off. So, yeah. We have Pretty Savage and I'm really glad that Jenny gets to rap on this and some of the other songs on the album. But yeah, the song is a great build up and it's an absolute hype anthem, which I really enjoy. Again, the drop is simple and springy, but super fun. And yeah, I like this more than how you like that. But they're both good songs. And then we have the single that was released along with the album, which is called Lovesick Girls. And this is a really great, I guess, early 2010s slash 90s slash 80s throwback song. I'm not really sure. It's, it's got a really great pop vibe to it. It's got that kind of city pop part on the chorus. Um, it's got those like glistening synth runs, the choreography, the video. It's filmed at night in a city. The song is a breakup song, or a song about getting over breakup and um, how they're always looking for love in all the wrong places. No pun intended. How they're looking for love and um, they're lovesick and heartbroken even though they have struck out with love. Which is admittedly pretty decent writing on this part. I actually think this song and how you like that when the lyrics are translated have pretty decent writing. And I'm sure it sounds better in Korean. However, um, the song is really works for me. Because the chorus is great. It's a bop, and the girls sound fantastic on it. Yeah, this song has a lot of hooks, and again has that popping that like bass synth line in the back with those little popping treble runs at the front of the mix. It, the song by Blackpink that it reminds me the most is of as, as If It's Your Last, that one. It was really great. They both give me city pop vibes. I like the second verse. It really keeps momentum going. It's a rap verse with some guitar. The first verse of the song is rather low key. It's actually really pleasant sounding, although I have heard this type of guitar and this type of song before in K-pop, but yeah, it's really good. And again, the second verse really keeps the momentum. The song keeps the momentum going, which is a good thing about it. It's one of the most pop-friendly songs Blackpink has made, and it's a really nice change of pace. It's pop-friendly about being complete obnoxious so out like ice cream. So, yeah, this song in As If It's Your Last Go is pop-friendly. Then we have the last three songs on the album, which are com all completely original, and, you know, they weren't released as singles or didn't have any sort of promo. We have Crazy Over You, which is a very neat-sounding, oriental-driven trap song. Again, the girls sound great on this. I think this one is a better cuts here, the production is decent. And again, it does have that nice little oriental flavor to it. And it feels rather dramatic. I do like the outro as well. I 
do really like the outro of this song. Blackpink is known for having good outros, at least in my opinion. I've always liked their outros. And this one is good too. Then we have Love to Hate Me, which is probably one of my favorite cuts here. The harmonies are really great. This song is pretty much completely in English, which I actually think the writing is decent. I'm not sure who wrote this. It definitely wasn't Ariana Grande. But yeah, basically this song is about some toxic relationship that they're in with someone who, you know, only loves to hate them. And basically they're just saying you're not worth it. Now, the chorus has a great trap bar. Uh, for some reason, the structure of this song, the sound of it, and parts of the um, chorus, or parts of the second verse especially, uh, it really reminds me of In and Out by Red Velvet, which is a B-side from their last um, album. So, I don't really know what else to say. But I do really enjoy this one. It's probably one of my favorite songs here. And again, it has a good sense of momentum. I do, I do kind of wish that that weird choppy part was cut out, the wake up part needs you now. That part is kind of jarring. Um, like, I honestly think it would work if it just went straight into the chorus. That is my only real complaint about the song. And again, the rapping is absolutely great. And I like the production here. And then we have the final song, which is You Never Know. A ballad with very nice vocals from girls. I've noticed Jenny's vocals have really improved here. And also, I think this is a song uh, you never know unless you walk in my shoes. It's kind of a song probably referring to, you know, how much people will hate on them blindly and all that kind of thing. Which I think is a pretty good sentiment and I'm glad they finally released it because... Or I'm glad they finally made a song like this because, yeah, they have received a ton of unnecessary hate. Which is not fair remotely. But yeah, here we are if you never know, which is actually a really nice ballad. And I really like the way the song sounds. It's got a bit more swell than something like Hope Not, which was their last ballad, which was extremely stripped back. And I'll stay stay is still my favorite ballad by them, however, that song is extremely quirky and different, so I'll give that a pass. But yeah. You never know. Again, this feels like an older style pop song. I don't know, I feel like Blackpink has always kind of been out of step with the times. Even when they released Boomba Ya in 2016, that wasn't really the kind of K-pop that was charting or popular at the time, even in Korea. So yeah, I tend to notice that um, their stuff just seems to be, that their stuff just seems to be kind of out of step with the times. I would say early 2010s, but with some modern inflections, it's kind of hard to describe. Overall, what do I think about the album as a whole? Well, I like the B-sides, I like Love Sick Girls and How You Like That, Pretty Savage Slaps, but oh god, Ice Cream is so bad and Bet You Wanna isn't much better. I know a lot of people like it, but I'm not one of those people. But yeah, I'm glad to have some new deep cuts from Blackpink and an absolutely fire song that's pretty savage and Love Sick Girls, so I give credit for that. But yeah, we only had eight songs here and one of them was How You Like That, which I'd heard a million times. One of them was Ice Cream, which got him horrible, and, 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 um, of course we got, um, Bet You Wanna. So really the only new songs that were interesting was Love Sick Girls and Pretty Savage, and then the three last songs. So basically just really five new songs that were interesting to me. But it's still a good output, and, um, I think most of the songs are at least decent, and the production is alright, so... I'll give it a tentative 6.5, mainly because I like songs like Pretty Savage so much, but then I have to remember that song like Bet You Wanna and Ice Cream really take points off, and there are so few songs on this album that when you have songs that feel like filler, it's really a huge problem considering the album is barely an acceptable length for an album. Just to be clear, I've seen albums in K-pop that are branded as mini-albums, which is basically an EP that have seven songs on them, such as It's Ease, It's Me earlier this year. And that was an incredibly tight project. Making this a full album was honestly just because the fans were begging. They could have cut Ice Cream and Pretty Savage and made a six song, or not Pretty Savage, I mean they could have cut out Bet You Want and Ice Cream, made a six song album with, six song mini-album with no 
Or they could have not even had How You Like That, just released that as a single and could have had Love, could have had Pretty Savage or Love Sick Girls as the title track and just released the other three songs and had a five song mini album. As much as I'm glad Blackpink has a full album, I honestly kind of think this would have worked better as a mini. And I don't know if I'm the only person who thinks that, but I don't know how else to explain it. It's just... I honestly just think this could have been a solid mini with Pretty Savage, Love Sick Girls, Crazy Over You, Love to Hate Me, and You Never Know. And it would have been a lot better. But anyway, what we have here, I give it a 6 or 6.5. Check it out if you're curious, if you like Blackpink. Um, or if you like this type of EDM, check it out. But um, otherwise, I think we can kind of leave it. Now, um... I, now, one song that I would recommend is La Di Da by Everglow. That song is fantastic, so I'd recommend you guys check that out. Other than the album wasn't really anything special. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye!